Alan Hood and Twain Robertson and all the former executive leadership team. Everybody, everything laid low and laid bare. Wake up and win. Wake up and win. Wake up. What's up guys? I am out and about today running some errands and uh, just wanted to give you guys a, I just wanted to give a quick update here. I just saw a, uh, a post from Dr. Michael Brown, a statement and 11 minutes worth of words and I appreciate it. In essence, what he said was that they, that IHOP KC has decided that they are not going to get a different independent third party investigator that would be agreed upon by the advocacy group which the advocacy group for everybody's knowledge is simply men and women that have been involved in leadership at ihop kansas city for uh most for 20 to 25 years uh 26 years some of them for the last five years but the majority of them for the last 20 to 26 years, which is a long time. So Dr. Brown's statement was that IHOP Kansas City, which is in essence now led by a former general, General Fuller, as well as a PR spokesperson uh, named Eric Voles. And so these, and then, and then what would be called an executive committee, which they have not made public and a board, which they have also not made public, which again, I find to be, very, very troubling, um, the secrecy and lack of transparency from this organization. Last night, uh, last night, General Fuller, after a day of the advocacy dropping about three hours worth of content of conversations between the advocates about how this all came to be and how we got to this place, they recorded this video in, in December. They held on to it in hopes that IHOP Kansas City would do the right thing and speak truthfully and be in communication properly and actually agree upon a mutually accepted independent third party investigation. And that's why they held these videos. Well, finally, they realized that the ramping up of the communication from the PR guy, Eric Voles, and the more intense statements over this last week pushed them to finally say, well, we're going to put out this information in these videos. So last night, and I would encourage you all to go watch those videos because it actually will break your heart what you find out within those videos and and you'll see the spirit behind this which is not a takeover of ihop or a tearing down of ihop it's simply men that were fathered by spiritually fathered by mike bickle for 25 years 26 years saying what is going on and what why is this man that we trusted not repenting publicly what's happening this is heart-wrenching to watch but instead of a proper response from IHOP Kansas City last night, they put General Fuller on the stage in an attitude of obstinance and said, and he said straight from the stage, he said, I do not know these men and, I, and they are liars. Well, General Fuller, I'll say to you, being one that has followed IHOP Kansas City uh, since 2004, moved moved up there, left my job, left my ministry to go there and pray and work in the night watch for four and a half years from midnight to 6 a.m., lead ministry teams overseas, uh, teach classes, teach interns, and poured my blood, sweat, and tears for four and a half years, I'll say, which is just a minute amount of time uh, to, to what others, many others have done for decades, two decades, moved entire families, left jobs, I'll say this, we do know them, and we've known them for many, many years. They have led millions into this prayer movement. You, sir, we do not know. You, sir, we have no idea who you are, nor do we listen to your words and take them seriously. What we just learned from Dr. Michael Brown today is that you have resisted getting a mutually agreed upon third party at this point, and you have decided that you'll go with the continued third party that you've chosen, that's been chosen by IHOP Kansas City to do this investigation, which we know that McNamara, that she is known for doing the opposite of what the advocate group is reaching out to do. She's known for uh, protecting organizations, not disclosing information about the organization. She's not fighting for truth, but she's known for actually getting organizations off in the midst of allegations, even when the allegations are true. We've known this, we've seen this, and this is not, this is not acceptable, sir. This is not acceptable. And I'll just say this, this is a damning 
telltale moment for the body of Christ, for the charismatic body of Christ, looking at this going, is this where we are? Is this where we are? We have a general, an army, a former army general being the spokesperson on behalf of a charismatic ministry. We have a PR guy that's literally being paid money to just set up the shop and make the video look really good and say really good things and be the punching bag for a large organization and ministry. And now we're saying that we don't know these advocates. These aren't advocates. These are the leaders of the prayer movement that they literally built the entire organization on their backs. This is absolutely mind-blowing. And with that, I'll leave this at the end of the video. Obviously, our 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 um my wife and I have been doing videos on this. If you're new to all this information, you can go back and watch everything on Wake Up and Win podcast on YouTube, or you can follow the information at Christina Foray or at Blaze Foray on X. We're dropping information daily. Um we are in the middle of a move right now. So as you can see, I'm in the car doing this video. We don't have any professional setup right now. We're kind of in the middle of lots of stuff, but this is burning in our soul right now and on our hearts. And we want to speak up for the body of Christ. We want to speak up for the victims. We want to speak up for the organization. We want to speak up for the, for the global body of Christ overall. What are we doing? And I'll say this, we are in a national moment of exposure. We're in a national moment of exposure, and I believe the Lord himself is revealing the sickness behind the scenes. And we've worshipped heroes in ministries, and, and I'm watching people still stand and call for the restoration of Mike Bickle back to the pulpit when the man has yet to even publicly repent. Instead of publicly repenting, they've lawyered up, they've PR guide up, and they put an army general in place. What does that tell you about this organization? And there's more to come, not just in this organization, but there's more exposure to come. And I wanna encourage everybody right now, it's time to be laid low, it's time to repent, it's time to return to the Lord. And, and I wanna encourage those who have been in uh, abuse situations with ministers or ministries, it's, it's time to step forward. And I'm not saying you step forward and have to reveal your name. Step forward as a Jane Doe. And dare I say, as a John Doe, step forward. Um, you can actually reach out to Boz Law, PA, BozLawPA.com, I believe is what it is. And Boz stands for these type of situations. He is Billy Graham's grandson, and he is an amazing lawyer that takes care of people within these situations. There's no fee to reach out and, and tell your story. And, there's, and then they will advise you on what the next step would be. And you can remain anonymous the entire time. That's completely up to you. I'll just say this. This is a national moment for the body of Christ, and it's a reckoning. It's a reckoning for the for the sexual immorality that we've allowed to live among us and to live among our leaders, and then for the narcissist leadership abuse tactics that we've allowed to live within our pulpits. We are done with it. There's a new generation arising. It's a new generation of Jehus that will pull down the Jezebels and then with a pure heart, remain in submission to the authority of the Lord and humility. This isn't a destruction, this is a reformation. And there are many, many voices out of the wilderness that are calling out. They're not just ministry voices. They're people in business and, and other sectors of society that aren't full-time ministers. Heck, I'm not a full-time minister right now, but it's voices that care. We're calling for a change. We're calling for a reformation. And I'm calling for General Fuller to unite with Alan Hood and the advocacy group and humble yourself before the, this history will not speak well of this moment for IHOP KC. It will not speak well of this moment for IHOP KC. And those that are leading this organization, if they continue to be obstinate, even the report that they're going to put out from McNamara and Lanthrop LP, I'm telling you folks, this this there is a reason why the advocacy group has has demanded 
asked for, begged for a third party organization that could be trusted in this type of situation. Why? It's not because they want to tear down our IHOP KC. Alan Hood made the statement yesterday. He said, if we got a mutually agreed upon third party to investigate IHOP Kansas City, not just the allegations against Mike Bickle, but the IHOP Kansas City as a whole, then they would have to investigate me. They said they would have to investigate me, Alan Hood and Twain Robertson and all the former executive leadership team, everybody, everything laid low and laid bare. And Alan said, do you think I'm excited about that? No, but I want justice and I want truth and I want transparency. That, my friends, is the type of leadership we want. Not a general standing up and saying, no, we'll do it our way. We don't know you. We don't know you. We'll do it our way. Guys, that's not what we want. And I say to the millions, the millions that have followed the prayer movement for so many years, demand that we don't want this injustice. We don't want this leadership. The voice of another, we will not follow. That voice of, of General Fuller from the stage, that's not a shepherd's voice. And this is not an indictment on you as a person, General Fuller. You're probably a good person. But you have been put in a position now where your voice is not a shepherding voice. This is not a shepherding voice. To, for you to, to deny the voices of, of two plus decades of leadership in the prayer movement and demand that you're the only one that has the power to adjudicate this, this situation, that is, the, that is the voice of another. And we can hear it, sir. We can hear it loud and clear. Eric Voles, a, a paid PR person, we're done with this. And the longer that IHOP KC stands with these people as the front people and not true leadership, the further and further down the, frankly, the further and further I see you getting toward the Red Sea that would close in on you again. And yes, that's spiritual language. It's not threatening language. It's just, I'm looking at the type of situation, like it's almost like Herod or something saying, you know, we know what we're doing. It's like Pharaoh saying, no, we'll do it our way. Anyway, God bless you guys. Hopefully we can figure this out. I just know for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. For me and my house, I am going to be humble and learn a lesson or two from this absolute crud show. One more quick note, I just read a post by John O'Hall, and John O'Hall is the one that does the filming for uh, the advocacy group's um, media that they put out yesterday. Now, he's saying that the lies that Fuller said that he uh, was claiming that they lied to him was because Fuller said that he asked John O'Hall if they were making a documentary, and uh, and Jono said, of course, no, we're not making a documentary. Well, it's it shows to me, and, and I'm, I'm going to give uh, Fuller the benefit of the doubt here, it shows to me the generation gap. If someone were to come to me right now and say, Blaze, are you working on a documentary for IHOP KC? I'd say, no, I'm not. If someone came to me and said, Blaze, are you doing a podcast and videos about IHOP KC? I'd, be, I'd say, yeah, I am. There would be no cross-referencing in my mind to those two. There'd be no overlap at all. I wouldn't even think to say the word yes if someone had asked me if I'm making a documentary while I'm making a podcast. It is what I would call the massive generation gap. I don't know uh, General Fuller's age. Maybe I am calling him older than he is, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say the man doesn't know, did not know how to... Uh, receive the information when it dropped from the advocacy group, that is just YouTube videos. That is not anything like a documentary at all. Go watch The Vow on HBO or on Amazon Prime. That's a documentary. Um, go watch Shiny Happy People on Amazon Prime about the Bill, Bill Gothard and, and their movement. That is a documentary. Um, go to our channel and you're going to watch uh, videos. Those are videos that are not documentaries. They're they're put together, but they're not documentaries. What we saw off the ab advocacy group was not a documentary. So instead of clarifying, he got bent out of shape, stood up in front of millions of people and said, I don't know these men. They are liars. I'll link in the comment section. I'll link in the, in the video um, notes on uh, to John O'Hall's post for clarification, but that should help quite a bit. Um, when I say help, I don't know that it's gonna help calm things down, but it sure will bring clarification. Uh, this was a big, big, big mistake on the part of Eric Vols, 
being a younger guy, should have fought, should have should have caught this. Um, but apparently, there's not communication over there. Uh, Fuller, massive mistake. You just called the the men that built the prayer movement liars to millions of people that have followed these men for years. Big mistake. Sincere mistake, maybe. I don't know, but definitely big mistake.